Bell. Where do you think you're going? Sit down, let's finish this fucking thing off here. Yeah. What I like about Aerosmith personally was the diversity. Someone called Janie's got a gun that's gonna be. It's it's so good. Uh, well, I think we're gonna do. Uh, you might be loving an elevator. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the song. No, it's, uh, I said it might be loving an elevator. Yeah, loving an elevator. Yeah, it's a good thing. But that's what this is. It's a traditional kind of traditional traditional funk. Yeah, <laughs> sort of in the traditional kind <laughs> of traditional way. Uh, Traditionally speaking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, in the 70s we would tour for like, a, you know, a year solid. We would do two or three shows day off, two shows day off, three shows day off. We do that for a year, a year and a half. And, you know, when you got, when you got cocaine to sniff and, and booze and pussy to fuck and all that shit, and it's like, it makes it real easy. It's, it's that rhythm, rhythmic quality of it, you know? Yeah. But it gives it a real flavor, you have lots of those A's and E's and all. It's, yeah, it's pretty nuts. It's nuts, but you know, I did drugs for like 25 years, so I had a problem stopping because I was just so fucking used to it. It's like living in the water all your life and coming out and living on land and saying, oh, I'm fine, I can function fine. Every other minute you're thinking about going back into the water. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's fucking crazy, but, you know, I was really fortunate enough to see that, that you know, it was, create, it, was, it was stifling my creativity, and that's what I was in a band for, was because I saw the Stones, and I saw the Yardbirds, and I said, fuck, I, not only do I love that, or what they're doing, but I want to do it too, and I want to do it better. I think I can do it better. <laughs> Basically, we were all uh, ensconced in this little studio, this tiny studio uh, in Cohasset, Massachusetts, which is kind of uh, just an out-of-the-way little town. And uh, it was sort of isolated for us, which is a good way to work, really, when you really have to get a lot of this, you know, busy work done of, uh, you know, arrangements, which is a lot of, you know, kind of the... Uh, the ditch digging of an album, you know, putting those arrangements together and rehearsing them. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody would slog in in the morning, kick the snow off their shoes, uh, and every couple of weeks Bruce would show up, you know, and he'd come in not showing a trace of jet lag, even though he'd flown in all the way from uh, Vancouver. And uh, we'd get right to work um, seeing where the band was at, um, with the songs he had asked us to concentrate on. Picture us there in Cohasset, and Stevens over behind his keyboard, you know, kind of sitting up in his royal chair there. <laughs> and uh, everybody's, you know, every time we come to rehearsal, everybody pretty much winds up in the same position, you know. And um, Stephen is kind of the uh, <clears throat> master of ceremonies. Um, you know, a lot of times he'll either be playing his keyboard or he'll just be listening while the rest of us are playing. And it's kind of a lucky thing because. Uh, when you're in a situation and you're the only person in the room who, who's not sitting there concentrating on uh, exactly what he's playing, you know, your, your mind is sometimes a little more free to just start uh, throwing ideas around, and that's what, and Steven is definitely good at that. Let's just take it from here. Don't get mad, get even. <laughs> Joe 
uh, you know, he's, you know, he's kind of uh, off by himself, and he's smoldering away on his guitar. But every once in a while, you know, a bolt of lightning jumps out, uh, and it's very obvious when it happens. And uh, when that happens, you know, everything will stop, and we'll take that and start, you know, working on it, seeing where that, you know, can go to. Uh, um, bring the song up another level. And, and um, you know, I'm over there, um, you know, completely absorbed in trying to make the rhythmic aspect of the song happen with Joey. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a weird thing because as you practice, you're changing the arrangement constantly. Not only are you changing it, but the next time you play it, you've got to remember those changes you made. But at the same time, your mind you know, is trying to say, how can I take this raw thing that I'm working on, this raw bass part, and make it more interesting? So we get the title coming back, and you could do those stacks, you know. Mm -hmm. um, just play it into that. He's a town planner, Bruce Fairburn. He's the one that says, no, 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 move that bridge. It's no good there. We should put a tunnel there, move the bridge, and that way we can get this point A to point B. He's a town planner, so when I walk in with all my scatterbrain stuff and Brad's got a song, you know, he puts it in his place. He goes, no, go to there, go to here, go to there, and I go, no, Blues, fuck you. He says, well, why do you feel that way? And we talk it out, so it's just another wall to bounce off of, you know? Of course, we just pay off and come in like gangbusters. Now it floats, and then just when you start to get a hold of it, it floats away on it, and it's gone. And it's okay to do that the first time the chorus comes up because you you know you're teasing teasing a little bit you know and you want it you want next time it comes up you think yeah here it comes here it comes here it comes. What he does is he's like yeah. he's very objective about the songs and he isn't as emotionally attached to them as we are so it's a lot easier for him to kind of come in and cut and maim and you know say this doesn't work this is terrible or this is great or you know and. Uh, you know, after by the end of the album, I usually hate him, you know, because he's so, uh, you know, he's a taskmaster. And, but, uh, you know, after a few months, I, I start looking forward to talking with him again. That's right, two or three tracks in a day. I mean, it takes you guys fucking nothing to do guitar parts and stuff. That's great. Steve's real quick on vocals. I, I'd rather use the time up front here to see if another hit hits the table or, you know, another gem comes in writing, you know? Bruce Fairburn uh, very much um, is listening for uh, those musical elements that stand out immediately, strong statements. I mean, the, the generic industry term is hooks. Um, you know, when somebody came to me once and said, you've got a lot of hooks in your music, I knew what they meant, but I was surprised. Because I just thought, you know, a hook, that's, that's a cool riff, you know, or that's, that's a really, um, that's just a really cool part. I really like this part here, but somebody else might call it a hook, fine. Um, but um, if you're going to make a living doing this, that's, I suppose they better be in there. Then we took it to Vancouver and spent about three weeks doing kind of pre-production, you know, like actually rehearsing for, you know, like getting the songs down. So like we're playing them live. And then uh, uh, we did kind of like a uh, demo tape thing where we played about, put 19 songs on 24 track just to see how they sounded and play them for John Kalodner. And, and, you know, so we could get an idea of where the album was going and if we really needed anything else, you know. Um, if we had all the elements. And then we started recording in earnest. And, and most of those demo tapes ended up being 
the bed tracks for the songs. So consequently, when we were doing the album, when we were finishing up the album, when we went online in Vancouver, we had an A-list and a B-list. Okay, the A-list had the Love in an Elevator, big hit, right? Hey, it's finished, it's happening. Um, what It Takes, big hit. Um, but the stuff like Monkey on My Back, Voodoo Medicine Man, all the B-list stuff was kind of put on the back burner. And I hated that, and I fought for it from, for months. If you worked on a little longer, you yourself said you wouldn't want to spend all day on a song. No. So if we don't get a song that just happens to be a little hard, like, you know, hey, whatever. Yeah, and like, the Walrus by the Beatles took a long time to yeah, do. But also See, if it was approached like this, hard, it'd have been you know? put on the back burner. That's all. I can't. You can't. Dis you can't dismiss that. Can that is that totally well, not true? No. I mean, I, you know, I had a passed on for two of these. Yeah. In at that the case, studio, we'd have never wound up doing sniffing. Never wound up doing monkey on my back if I didn't go, Jesus. You know, just that little bit of nuts. I don't, I don't want to sway anybody. That's how I feel.